Hi, I'm Bor, and these that are now playing are Proton car speakers, made in the desktop speakers with this cement mortar slash drywall sealed enclosure. This is the second part for this build. First part was all about the speakers and restoring them. And for this video, let's go over how these unusual cabins came to be. These are not totally finished yet. Some cosmetic things are missing like paint, terminals and some solution for this scene. But I have been using them for some time now and I have been happy with them in my desktop use. Clarity is okay, also enough output for my use, but what they need is help from subwoofers as maybe is expected for about 90 to 80 Hz and under. I started by making this test enclosure and the material for this is the same than what is in the final cabins. 13 mm plasterboard or drywall. Extra hard variant instead of that normal very brittle plasterboard. This board has glass fibers to give extra strength and also is heavier so denser than the regular board. Any wood based boards are still much better option for speaker building. For me this was the test concept if plasterboard could be used for speaker building and that definitely is the case even with the results which are comparable for MDF or similar board cabins. So question rises why use plasterboard instead of MDF or plywood? It's steep, especially now when some wood boards are in short supply. Also, plasterboard can be dense and stiff option for its thickness. Good thing with that is the heavier the box material is, more inertia it has against resonances. Also for outside finish like the cement mortar, the plasterboard is blended option as a core. Some of the drawbacks and how to work with this board I go over when showing the build process. But before that, quickly some things about this test box. Three useful things that this told me before building the final boxes was first, extra care is needed for sealing and interfacing these speaker frames into this cabin face. That means wood inserts where the speaker mounts are and these terminals are right at the edge so that interferes with the ceiling. So I removed the terminals and made direct connections. Second thing was that for the final design I made the top and bottom piece same width. That made holding the pieces together easier. That helps in assembly because any fasteners cannot be used, only sealant. Also some thought was needed how to get all the pieces together and try avoid making the box diamond shape. Butt joints with the wood boards are much easier and better to make than with the plasterboard. That's one drawback of this method. Third thing was the actual dimensions. Volume was too small for my liking, so I made the final box bigger and also measurements with polyfill in this test box showed some resonances. So for the final design I used polyfill and also made the back plate into the angle to maybe help with the standing waves. Because the width and the height of this box is kind of determined by this speaker frame. Only way to make bigger box was to make it longer and I measured my desktop to see what length and also in what angle to make this back plate. So I matched this shape for where roughly I would point and place these speakers on my table. Bigger box would have been better and given better performance 
from these speakers. But even for that, subwoofer would have been needed. So I decided to go more with the aesthetics in dimensions and just give more duty to subwoofers. Now let's go over how these were built. First I cut smaller pieces from this whole sheet. I did use about half of the whole sheet and that was only about 19 euros. From these smaller pieces I started to cut actual cabin parts. I had all the dimensions in a sheet of paper calculated before and now I needed just to cut right pieces and right angles for the top and bottom parts. Plasterboard is easy to cut, just use carpet knife to cut through the paper, bend, board cracks and use the knife again to cut the paper on the other side of the board. Drawback of this as a building material for small seats like this is that the edge finish is not good. So I went through every edge and trimmed them with a the knife to make edges smooth. It was a messy process, but a necessary step to make the butt joints work. Also other drawback of this board is that the making small trim cuts is hard, because bending only small sliver of the board evenly off the main piece is difficult. And also that may crack the board in the wrong place. So plant the cuts in a way that you don't have to make smaller dream cuts. For smaller cuts I used piece of wood to help get the pressure evenly across the piece so that it would bend in the right place. For the mounting I needed small pieces of wood. So next I made those. In the test box I had two wood strips where the speaker mounted, but for this I made three into the each speaker to make mounting more secure. And also I made one wood piece as an brace for middle of the speaker. For gluing pieces together I used Wurz acrylic sealant. Drawback of this board is that you can't use any fasteners to hold panels together. I used the tape to help keep panels in place and assemble the cabinets. Three wood pieces are at the front and that one in the middle. And same sealant is also used to hold them in. I left the side panels longer at the front to make a lip to help with mounting and sealing. I just needed to trim that into the size with the knife. After that I used same acrylic sealant, mix with water and apply that into that edge face so it would not crumble too easily. After that it was time for the mortar. What I used was kind of cement mortar that I had left over when I plastered over a smooth finish for the chimney inside of the house. This doesn't need any sand. Just add water and mix, wait few minutes and start applying. Getting a smooth surface took a long time and I ended up doing this finish in two layers. Next layer was done in the next day. Some of the extra mortar I poured inside of the enclosure to give this corner and the back plate some extra strength. Edges were trimmed with the knife before the mortar was fully hardened. After a few days, cabins were fully dry and only needed speaker frames to be installed, stuffing added and wires connected. And that's where we are now. This turned out like why I was expecting. Rough and homemade looking. Mortar finish is rough at some places. Maybe paint could make it more uniform. Obviously these cabins are quite heavy and that's a good thing. In my opinion these enclosures turn out quite damped 
and well behaving in acoustical standpoint. Idea is that the box should be as dead and solid as possible to pressure changes inside the cabin. I don't have the same thickness plywood box to compare, so hard to say how these fare, but I don't think the difference is big between these and for well-made braised plywood box. But I would still prefer working with the plywood. Not to say that I would not use plasterboard as a material some point again. If you like DIY audio content and want to learn more about audio, subscribe. Liking this video also helps me a lot. I will leave you with some YouTube audio library sucks and we will see in the next video.